roster change in the offseason if they weren't looking to give this roster another go. Well, they will give it another go, and we're going to see it right here. I actually love Gamsu's glasses, just to say. And we start this one off. Thresh, Rek'Sai, and Agragus being banned out here. I think everybody's wearing glasses right now. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. Oh, no coaches. Could so, be wrong about this, but it looked like Gamsu's glasses were very similar to Huni's new glasses. Ooh. Something about Korean top laners in LCS. Yeah, we'll have to see. Well, Zion will be able to participate in the glasses war versus Gamsu in the top lane. Yeah, Jarvan ban actually is pretty interesting. Gamsu's top lane Jarvan was devastating. Yeah. All the way back in the promotion tournament, and we get a Bard ban. <laughs> People ban Afro Moose Bard so much. You ban one support, he's gonna first pick another one. Alistar's locked in. Yep. We gotta remember how big uh, a factor that Alistar was for Kiwi Kid to get this team back in the LCS as well during their, let's say, promotion tournament. Or stay in tournament, if you will, for them. And they will lock in themselves. Court JJ going for the Kalista, and Azingi decides to go with that Sejuani. He's also been able to play that Jarvan as well. So that was a good ban there by CLG. Yeah. Interesting right here. Oh, wow. Smithy goes with the Lee Sin. So the two big time junglers banned out, Gragas and Rek'Sai. Right. And now we have Team Dignitas going with the Team Fight jungler and CLG. Almost going back to their bread and butter, an early pressure jungler for X Smithy. Now, not what most teams have been finding success with lately, but Lee Sin always finds a way to come back. One thing I do want to talk about as well is the Ash lock in right here. Mm -hmm. uh, Ash, fairly successful in the European LCS, obviously had that big rework, but a lot of the power that Ash used to have would have been in the gold generation you could get from the Hawkshot. Yep. That's gone, and a lot of the power has been deferred into Ash's early game. Uh, so the laning phase of Ash versus Kalista is actually really strong for the Ash, and that could be what CLG is picking it for. Double lift does like to be aggressive in that laning phase. Whatever can get him to a safe mid game of farming, the team can do whatever they want if they want to fight. Looks like it could have shifters Azir. We've known Shifter not to be super explosive in the laning phase, can sometimes fall behind, but it's about the team fights for him and cleaning up. That's what you can do on Azir. Yeah. Hopefully they can do it with the rest of this composition. And no bans at Kiwi Kid's Annie. That is no. his champion. Yeah, they got rid of the Alistair, which Kiwi Kid did great with in the promotion tournament. After his Alistair is great as well. But the Annie is the playmaker for Team Dignitas, and it creates openings in team fights if he can get that going. I mean, it takes a lot of pressure off of Vizingi to land great glacial prisons if Kiwi Kid's always starting it with the Flash Tibbers. So the team fighting that Dignitas is putting together from a team comp perspective yep. is quite strong. Quite strong indeed. So far, either a bit of an engage or headbutt disengage if they want. A lot of things can throw people around or freeze you up right now and a whole team to lock you down so a Kog'Maw can be spitting in your face. It looks like Pole Belter will be locking that in for the first time around. All right, so a tank team, Ash, yeah. and the long range poking there from COG. A lot of early pressure from all the lanes except the mid lane, where I guess Pole Belter will be that late game insurance, Absolutely. so to speak. We even saw Fallen Behind. It still works from Incarnation earlier. If that Kog'Ma can't do what it needs to in the laning phase, it'll still hurt in the fight phase. Could be a Gnar here coming in for Gamsu as Dignitas rounds out their composition for their first game in the LCS. It's going to be against Counter Logic Gaming, two long standing teams with quite changing rosters throughout the past year or so. Maybe that hacker towards the top lane, a safe, strong lane that could provide some aggro, but you can get the same out of this Gnar, which is why it is being flopped back and forth. You know, trying to decide. This can give them much more bottom lane ganking threat, especially against an immobile AD carry like Ash for double lift. A lot of stuff is going to be able to single him out and go for him, which means the rest of CLG will have to pick up the slack behind him if double lift gets focused. Well, we will see. Core JJ may, may want to go aggressive here with Kiwi Kid. I'd like to see how Zion Spartan and Gamsu handle it if we get the lane swap coming into this one. It's going to be difficult for both of them if they just have to kind of go around with a Smithy and a Zingy. Also looking at those two junglers too that didn't exactly make an impact for their teams last year, maybe trying to do so this year. A Smithy kind of had a bit of a falter at the end of the season and, and a Zingy as well. Kind of looking for him to really bloom. Yeah. COG still confident in X Smithy's mechanics. Yep. Standing yep. behind their team. jungler despite 
a ton of community criticism at his play in the playoffs. Zeke Slow as well doing pick spans for the right here. Well, the coaches are ready. That means the players are more than ready to get on the rift, and we're going to be heading into game three soon. So start sharing your picks for this match on Twitter. Send hashtag CLGWin or hashtag DIGWin to at LOL Esports as usual, and you'll be seeing how your vote counts in just a little bit at the bottom of the screen as we get into this third firefight going on in the day. The North American LCS Summer Split Game 3 here for 2015 going live. And it is going to be CLG versus Team Dignitas. We'll see what Pole Belter has in the mid lane for CLG and what Dignitas has done during the break to make this a better team. Yeah, and speak back to Team Dignitas a little bit as well. Gamsu and Core JJ plus Kiwi Kid uh, in the laning phase were actually really strong throughout a lot of the LCS split. It's just they couldn't ever really quite bring uh, the team play together. So. That's basically what I'm going to be looking for here. Yeah. Does Team Dignitas still have those strengths in the laning phase? And how well can Azingi work with the rest of the team now, especially when he's in this mismatched early game power jungle matchup against a very aggressive Lee Sin and Smithy while Azingi tries to farm up until six? Ooh, Kamsu, some nice dodges there, making sure he doesn't get hit by anything, but they have the vision. Aframu gives a little laugh on the cow. So everybody's going to get their deep wards that they want this game. It's all about how that actually is played out. That'll be seen, and it will see anybody. Same with that one. We have seen that people can sneak by. If you don't place it deep enough, you try to hide yeah. your ward. But teams just give up on that. Nobody's going to be taking it out by the time it gets there. Yeah, this is the early game deep warding that you would expect that mm -hmm. we didn't see in the TSM Cloud9 game. TSM Cloud9 game, they let one team do it, and then Cloud9 didn't sneak in the backside. Yeah. Not here, Dinger Toss takes the bottom side of the map. COD takes the top side of the map, and this is the COD game, honestly. When they were near the top of the North American LCS standings throughout pretty much the entire spring split until they collapsed down the stretch, they were out lane swapping people and beating them that way. So it makes sense that they want to do a lane swap game here. Very true. It was usually that Morgana that they would pick out in the early game. You can still get great kinks with an Alistar, no problem there. But it won't be the dark bindings. So after move taking a very tricky route to get these in. It'll be very interesting to watch. Wow. They're taking one, two, three, three camps right away. So Smith is gonna have to run straight down to his next jungle. This this will be interesting actually. I wonder if they're gonna make a run. Nat, I, I was gonna say, I wonder if Smithy's gonna make a run for his own red, but that would be far too dangerous because they're they're jungling to the strong side of the map for them, which is where their mm. AD carrying their support is. Immediately, Kiwi Kid should actually go down and get some control in the red side jungle to prevent X Smithy from making it down there. And here we go. They're going first gank for Shifter. Yeah, they may actually just do what you were saying, Jat, with the power of Zion Spartan and X Smithy as well, but they knew they would run into a bit of back and forth. However, this might give him the pressure for his red, or at least the 2v2. No, there's that power you're talking about of the duo bot lane. Here's Kiwi Kid. Yeah, not with Alistair still sitting in the top lane. Mm -hmm. That too. Hmm. I'm, I'm actually curious there. Uh, even though Gamsu was near the gank in the mid lane, I don't think he was ever revealed. So <laughs> Aphromoo's actually just been waiting up in that top lane, uh, toying with him, basically trying to trying to fool Dignitas into thinking that it's just a solo Ash up there, and then surprise Alistair in a brush for the last three minutes. But Aphromoo's Really playing a lot of League of Legends right now. Finally moving. <laughs> Two minutes after sitting in the brush. He was grazing. Let me give him a moment. There we go. Eating the grass out of the brush. So he's revealed. He is now revealed. <laughs> Starting to use a few of those relics as well along the way. I think his first reveal was for that siege. This is actually really important. Let's see how COG can pull off this lane swap timing. They want to catch Team Dignitas before they can get to the turret because this is a giant wave crashing and Team Dignitas wants to collect it. But they Team Dignitas is slow on this rotation, meaning if they try and make the run for it, they're going to die. Oh, so that's a little, little antsy. It's a huge CLG wave they're going to what they want, right. And Dig misses that. Oh, but now that they're revealed around the turret, this will be interesting. 3v4 in between the turrets. 
What a game. <laughs> yeah, it's all about how many CS COG can deny here at the turret. Team Nikitas wants to make the move up, but they don't want to risk the four members from COG right here. Meanwhile, Korja J is freezing, but it's not the same level of trade. That's a giant wave that COG has been able to deny, as well as a bunch of people's time. Still looking for a little more out of this as well. Why not? The wards are there if you keep the pressure on. Make it hurt as much as possible. Zion Spartan backs. He is now teleporting to the bot lane, and CLG did get their swap. And that's what you were talking about before, Jat. Trying to get the swaps in their favor, catch somebody in transit. Unfortunately, it didn't work that time. Back down to the bottom lane. I'll see poor JJ match up with Zion Spartan here. Smithy just grabbing crab control as he knows he's going to be on the backside of a zingy somewhere. And that trouble be pretty nice. Looks like the smite has actually going over to Smithy if you already grabbed that one. Yep, going to try gone. and deny him as much as mm -hmm. possible. It's interesting seeing CLG just kind of go back to exactly what they were winning with in the regular season. Oh. No auto after. Volley didn't stick on Kamsu, so no crit there. But you're right, just to kind of push everything to the waist. It's weird that they went away from it, I think, in the first place as well. It worked for yeah. so long, and it was the way they won games single-handedly. Yeah. Well, there were several, I'll call them novellas, written by CLG or former CLG members during the offseason. Yeah. Uh, tons of infighting, so a bunch of reading to do if anyone wants to know the inner workings of the CLG team. But we'll call it drama that happened online. <laughs> so it's very interesting to me, after reading all that, that the way CLG comes back is almost exactly the same as the way they were winning in the North American LCS spring right. split that they went away from in the playoffs and then... They're just like, you know what? Why did we ever change? We're just going to play these ways. Slightly different champions here. Kog'Maw mid, Ash, Shady carry. Right. But as far as the early game lane swapping game that they were so good at, uh, they're just doing it again right here. Yeah, maybe it, Pole Belter is that dynamic that now offers a little bit more aggression or unmeasured ability. Link would always we'll get his roam on, get a few kills, but I see a, a Pole Belter, best set in A, doing that a little harder sometimes. And we'll see if it pays off for him. That was the switch they made. Like we said, they also have Huhi to put in that mid lane if they do decide to do so. But many think that Pole Belter has the higher skill cap there. 45 to 41 so far against Shifter. Not too bad in the mid lane. We saw Incarnation take quite a beating and still do well. But staying even in CS is going to make this Kog'Maw hurt quite soon. Yeah, this matchup in particular uh, does actually favor Azir early. It, yeah, Azir can <laughs> shove in early on and force Kog'Ma off a lot of CS. Once Kog'Ma gets level six, he can start to equalize because then he can start shoving back. The fact that Poe is okay in CS actually means he's winning that lane. Mm -hmm. Being up four is actually being up about 10 more than he's expected to be up. Well, yeah, he's supposed to be down and he's actually up. Right. So backing from both junglers. Looks like they will be able to get their trailblazers just about readied up. We already see that Mazingi is back into the jungle, but he hasn't been able to provide too much other than defense for the team so far. It looks like they're allowing CLG to kind of have this upper hand. Yeah. Maybe it's to stay well, safe. Just let them let him, let him level. It's not hurting him too much. Yeah, honestly, Azingi just wants to farm until six. Right. And X Smithy hasn't done much to shut him down. They had the nice little lane rotation early. But beyond that, uh, Zingi is out experiencing the Lee Sin and still able to hand his blue buff off to the mid laner. Therefore, the Team Dignitas, let's hope we get a good team fight with a level 6 Annie and a level 6 Ijwani before Lee Sin can run them over is working quite well. Only a few bits of the early game when teams were walking back to their lanes and figure out where they were going. Did we see that aggression towards the middle? It seems like Dignitas has kind of gotten everything they wanted out of invading there. Now that we're matched up, in the top lane. It's not duos, it's support and top laner versus double lift and Alpha Moon now. Let's see what happens with Core JJ getting all this free farm to himself. He actually is down in CS. A little bit of aggression that he found there from Zion Spartan. So slow game right now for Dig, and they keep getting found out here from CLG, which is going to make everything they do just the right thing in these next few moments. If they can put these pieces or these pieces in place, the ganks are gonna be so much easier when you know where Zingy is. Yeah, as long as they arrive beforehand. Because, I mean, Zingy has done it. He's made it to level 6 already. Not super early, but not tremendously before behind X-Smith. You can't really look at the...
clock in the game to judge that because when you do lane swaps, mm -hmm. oftentimes your experience is heavily delayed. Yeah, pretty subdued early game here from, from both teams, and that does favor Team Dignitas, uh, at least a little bit. The Ash and Kog'Maw have great late game scaling. It's really just yeah. Lee Sin who's not great late game. So overall, the team compositions, uh, you could argue a couple different ways for which one is better late. Honestly, if Pope Belter gets going enough and Doublelift gets his items, uh, COG could actually have the better late game here, which might explain their relatively passive play despite having the Lee Sin. Mm -hmm. It's all about that Pope. We saw how much it hurt Incarnation when he couldn't get his blue, so hopefully that starts going over Pope Belter soon. A lot of variables there for that mid lane Kog'Maw. So they can get to the late game safely, and we'll see if CLG can protect him. It's what people said they've learned about playing on CLG is to protect people, mostly the AD carry, <laughs> as it comes to be, but it can work all the way around. Putting on that Ranger shot, able to get a few extra bullets in there, and didn't have too much slow. So Only a crit shot, couldn't get back to him again. And seeing that new Ash go to work, and we'll see if Doublelift can put up some big numbers here as we get into the late game. Still waiting for this initiation that they have, whether it's Aphromoo to fly in, then an arrow, then more lockup from Zion Spartan. They have a lot of potential to keep somebody in place with this team. Yeah. Good CC on both sides, actually. So we could it's end true. up getting some pretty bloody team fights. You see Pope being able to lock people down. Afraid with that cleanse already. Summoner spells. Shifter brought it as well. Both of them know it's going to be difficult in these fights to keep moving and keep away from the enemy. Yeah. Have to touch on the CS at this point in the game as well. Mm -hmm. The thing that COG excelled at more than any other team wasn't necessarily just CS at 10. It was CS differential at 10 between the bottom and the top laners. That's usually what most teams have to do is in order in a lane swap situation is they sacrifice one for the other. But what COG would almost always tend to do is just do the trade straight up better. So tip Ooh. sort of COG is sort of sacrificing mm. Zion Spartan's farm for double lifts, but the differential between Gamsu and Zion Spartan is almost 30 at this point, and double lift also has a differential. So as far as lane swap farm goes, yeah. COG's around plus 40 in overall gain in the first 11 minutes. Very, very well played. We've heard Zion Spartan in interviews before saying it's a privilege to be able to get that CS. Now that he's in a 1v1 lane, I'm sure he's smiling ear to ear. That privilege is quite easy for him. Also, awesome hawk shot by Double Lift. Seeing that big wave build up in the top lane, saying this could be dangerous. I wonder if anybody's around us. And he actually finds a zingy over at his Krugs. Very nicely done. Giving more information over to Smithy and the rest of the team to play this one easy. Also gives Zion time to get up here. Make sure they don't have control over Dragon before CLG does. Perfect. Haha. -ha. Got the ward. Interesting moment in the game here for sure. Looks like we're seeing both teams look at Dragon around the same time, yeah. as you were saying. Uh, so the top laners moving top lane with their teleport. COG not able to pull a huge advantage from the lane swap. They haven't been able to get any roam kills with Lee Sin and Alistair, which is somewhat disappointing by COG early game standards. Right. Meaning they're probably going to have to get some of their kills from a team fight where if Kiwi Kid has his way and gets the right initiation, may be fairly difficult for CLG at this juncture. Although, of course, all CLG really needs is a level 11 Kog'Maw with Luden's Echo, and then they can start the pre-fight poking forever. Seems so far away, though. <laughs> <laughs> that first blue buff, never given to the midder. Well, Pope Belter will get one soon. He'll be fine. We'll see what that tier actually is for him right now. 349 out of 750. So he's got an okay clip on that. And it shouldn't be too bad. Shifter trying to push that lane up. Looks like he's actually going to go grab his blue. Here's Sejuani. Whoa! Oh, indeed. Tibbers goes right down to double lift. He leaves Aframu there. He knows he will be all right. Even with the Fates call, no problem. CLG is going to just walk out of this one with Rush Hour safe and sound. Yeah, both summoners burn from Doublelift and from Kiwi Kid. I really like what Aphromoo did there, using his Unbreakable Will and then walking forward so the Doublelift wouldn't get caught in the Glacial Prison. It means Alistair doesn't take much damage, and Doublelift hopefully gets to continue his farm. Oh, Shifter finally gets his blue. Thought he would have to go down bottom lane to help with that little tussle back and forth. Another game, though, without kills coming into the early part here. Teams are very, very safe and measured as they come into these. 
Never really wanting to give anything up. Maybe afraid of a bit of a mentality tilt that you'll find at the beginning of the season since you haven't played too much and you're really not in the flow. Who knows? There's a lot of variables as these teams come in. Oh, we oh, no. flashed straight into it. This is where the CC gets piled on. And as I say, it's a tempered game. First blood comes from the Ash Arrow of double lift and the kill to Xmithy. Flash sideways, man. <laughs> the arrow's gonna keep going in a straight line. It's not gonna juke for you. That moment when you wish Kiwi Kid could Fates call you too? Yeah. Can't work. Please help. Uh, that was just poor flash there by Core JJ. Mm -hmm. COG gets the kill. First blood ends up going to X Smithy. I'm sure COG would like to have that over right. on a double lift. But now that they've been able to pull a kill in the bot lane and get a turret, it's time for some crab control. Trying to see a little movement from Gamsu there. I thought he was hauling ass all the way down to Dragon. I thought it would be weird. They're down numbers, but he stays in the top lane. Looks like he's just putting a ward down towards Crab. Whoa. Oh, Melker a little too antsy in the pantsy. He misses the last soldier. Zingy <laughs> flashes over and just bops him on the head with the flail. Kathy in surprise will not hurt Shifter too bad. He stays in lane. Yeah, nice knockback there by Shifter. Pull both are as a Kog'Maw with a Luden's Echo, never has to get close enough for that to happen. Uh, but he was getting a little greedy with his CS, and Shifter did a very nice E-dash move where he queued as he was in the air for the extra uh -huh. extended range. Surprise Pope Belter and ends up getting the kill. The banana's ear. Oh. We need, a, we need a great word for that. We do. Banana's ear is pretty half-assed. Banana's ear. We'll come up with one. We'll get it. We'll get maybe, it. Maybe, maybe Banana's ear is the best we'll maybe ever it do. Is. <laughs> maybe it is. We see a Zingy was just heading towards the top lane, trying to just be present in every lane for his team right now. And with that, he may have given up more pressure here than he wanted, but Kiwi Kid and Core JJ are on it, I think. <laughs> Smithy's actually just taking these he shots He really here. wants it. He's like, come on, guys, help me with Dragon. Uh, there is uh, Sejuani ultimate up. Danger Dragon right here. After moves all back up again, they put Kiwi Kid into a bad spot. Fate's called out, and that's only for safety. You don't the think Dragon, he's guys! thrown back in. Oh, they threw Kiwi Kid backwards. Kind of saw the camera catch it there for action play, and it was the Dragon taken down. Went over to a Zingy. Very nicely done. Yeah, so first Dragon for Team Dignitas. Yeah, the turret went down to the top lane, but not because of what was happening at the Dragon Pit. It's actually a big advantage when you can have the same number yeah. of investors in a Dragon fight, and one team gets it without suffering any real dangers as a result of having people there. So, Team Dragon Toss down in gold thanks to the turrets, but that's mainly from the lane swap. The Dragon could maybe keep them in the game. Not too much damage onto Poe Belts just yet from those sand, sh sand soldiers. Woo. That global hop shot. Yeah, it's going to be paying off big. Look, Alpha Moon moving in, easily able to place a ward without hesitation there, and then the rest of the team can move on that action instantly. They don't have to wait. They get a few hits onto the turret. That hawk shot definitely being used to full effect here by Double Lift, defeating even only for a few bits of advantage. We have Gam Suzanne Smart back in the top lane. One level difference here, and that's going to be another ultimate that Gamsu does not have a level of that. Zion Spartan's fighting with double lift in the middle. The arrow's up, and he's waiting on the side to fire this off. Just yeah. wait for it. Fog of War arrow. Shifter. Yeah. Oh! Ah! <laughs> Success! No, not really. They don't get any turret damage because of that. <laughs> Just missed the flights on the end of the arrow. Yeah, so CLG does have the level 11 with Pope Belter on the loot Zeko, so they're trying to set up camp here in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Uh, they just need to be able to successfully land some poke and get people off the turret. They did get Shifter off the turret, which you can see now, Team Dignitas even using their Rangers Trailblazer Smite to clear it off, which yeah. ends up being enough. There we go. Something about this Team Dignitas team, having Kiwi Kid on any creates just so much pressure because you know at any moment he'll <laughs> go and make that initiation. It's literally, if you didn't pay attention to any other flashes in the game, but only his, I think you'd be all right. You have to know when it's up. He's going to dive on you. I think we've heard in his interviews before, like, yeah, I have mobility boots, I'm going in. That doesn't, yeah. that's not a good reason to go in. <laughs> <laughs> Kiwi Kid will almost always be the first one to pull the trigger too. So that's why Annie is so good, since it's an almost unmissable ultimate. Yeah. Flash to instant cast terrors, which creates the stun. And then everyone else will follow up after that. Mm -hmm. And instantly uh, upgraded to Distortion Boots as well, so it can do it over and over and over again. 
19 minutes on the clock and only a kill apiece between these two teams. And those are the junglers. Getting a little greedy here for themselves. That was a flash kill from Zingy that was helping out Shifter and Pole Belter in a 1v1 in mid lane. And we saw Xmithy himself help with that kill in the bottom lane after Doublelift was able to hit the arrow. So both fights have gone to somebody else off of not even their own fight. It's always been the counter engage that really came into play. So blue buff over to Shifter. I believe Pole Belter just got his. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it while they were pressuring that mid turret. They just didn't have enough to relieve the pressure and come back. So we'll see how it works now that they can do -si do with those blue buffs in mid lane. A round two. Oh! Go! Go forward in, I should say, out of his turret rag aggro into CLG's aggro. Yep. And that hurt. Well, that's exactly what Shifter had already done to Pole Belter. That was the window for the banana's ear move where he gets behind him and hits him back with the wall. Right. But as it comes, an arrow flies through. Just really unlucky timing there for Shifter and it cost him his life and maybe two turrets. Double lift, able to stay on that nicely. The next minion wave actually just falls in line and they're able to take that. Like you said, two coming up for those kills as well. Four to zero in turrets, two to one in kills. Gamsu looking to put the first stamp down for what Dignitas has grabbed here on this map. It looks like he'll get it. He might pay with his life if they decide to pursue all the way, but they have to know they have their own guys on the back heel here. Yeah, four turrets to zero. The COG rotation is very strong right now. Oh, and God. he hasn't even been able to finish this turret. Still four turrets to zero. Wow. No way. Oh, Afro move. Save the turret. It'll be down. They'll come back and they'll be able to hit it. One, One health. health. One health. Anyone. Just blow on it. <laughs> I missed. You have to be in the game. They changed the screen. Yeah. No, I missed. That would have worked. Oh, okay. Fair. So Gamsu's back. Also with Ignite in that top lane. Wasn't able to use that throughout the entirety of his laning phase because he had Kiwi Kid there. And he was behind trying to recuperate that CS. Hopefully finalizes a few kills that will be pivotal for these upcoming fights, though. Haven't seen too much pressure from anybody but that first bit of a Zingy Ganks. Yeah, COD not giving windows for Team no. Dignitas to go after them. And now rotating for turret number five. Gamsu not there, will have to teleport in if he wants to stop this one. Nope. Oh. Watch out. Grabbing a little why afro. Uh, why on to afro move? That just doesn't make much sense. Why on to afro move? Indeed, he can just break that crowd control immediately. And they're on to a zingy, making sure if the tank is dead, everybody else is going to pop immediately to this team, especially since Pole Belter can start to living artillery, the squishy targets on the outside now. Of all the targets with flash tippers up when defending a turret, <laughs> the guy you can't kill because he's immediately going to break your CC and then take 70% yeah. reduced damage. COG really harassing down these turrets already from the Luden's poke, as well as having the Ash poke. These guys just siege monsters and still Gamsu not teleporting in. This is an inhibitor turret going down. Six turrets to zero. 22 minutes in, Jat. Absolutely crazy play. This happens when you have full map control. The pink wards are forward for CLG. The hawk shots were in the right spot. The arrows from the fog of war doesn't let Dignitas engage from anywhere. And we'll see if Zion Spartan goes down here. Gamsu flies in, but he only has about 10% mana as he gets into the core of the fight. Can't do much from that point on. JJ out with Kiwi Kid on the backside as CLG still kind of just able to spit in that damage from long range. Jeez, and then when Gamsu actually does teleport in, it's after he shoved at the bottom lane, so still yeah. zero turrets for them. Oh boy. AP Kog'Maw burst. Oh, Shifter. <laughs> There's a lot of scary things happening right now. Oh, he took... Shot right through the soldiers. <laughs> right, <laughs> right through the shields. Oh, he was too close. Yeah, COG just took such heavy control of this game mainly just by trusting in the power spike of the AP Kogma right here. They Ooh. pushed through so much. Team Dignitas could not find the right initiation. Look at that. Sejuani ultimate on his own Spartan, so the front line doing his job there for COG. Gamps, who only ults one person back, the Aphima who didn't have his ultimate, so he goes down. But COG sticking strong, knowing their compositional strengths, taking the turrets because of their early lane swapping supremacy, and just playing this game very well. Ooh. He tucked his tail in on that one. Oh. 
Of course there's going to be more crowd control. Look at this team. You still have Arcane Smash as well. There it is. Slows him down a little bit more. And with Aphromoo's <laughs> cooldown, it's like you got a Malphite ulti coming in the next few seconds. Boom, boom, if you need it. But you don't, because bang comes from Zion Spartan. It's pretty remarkable that COG still hasn't given a turret up to Team Dignitas. That guy in the top lane's got one health. Gamsu keeps trying down that bottom lane, but now COG has control. Look at the giant minion waves in the top. With super minions, you're not going to push that down back. And COG just valiantly defended the bottom one, plus the dragon control for their first dragon into the game. Not their priority. Their priority has been turrets before anything else. Oh, it's their first dragon. I was like, dragon yeah. number, oh, one, that's right. They have actually just pushed too fast in this game for there to be that many dragons even spawned yet. So the second dragon of the game goes down. That's going to be coming up at about 30, 40 for the next try in these teams as they are both at one to one. Really no advantage to come from that just yet. CLG is looking to grab that off of this next outer turret to drop the last one before the inhibitors are left. Slowly but surely. Another minion wave is quite far behind. Nick Smithy actually looks like he wants to get behind this turret real quick. He's going to be seen out by Gamsu, though. Yeah, this is a very potent siege. They already have yeah. super minions pushing in the back. Gamsu doesn't have his teleport up. CLG just knowing their power spike perfectly right now. They also have Aegis completed onto the Alistar, Frozen Heart, so they have the ore items required. Double item power spike for double lift as well. Like everything is timing just right here for CLG, and they're just gonna wait for Dignitas to jump on them or wait until they can get initiation. I mean, he's dead before he jumps in. Gamsu died on the way in pretty much. They are able to grab double lift on the backside. Shifter gets his target. Now he's 1v1 pull Belter, but it's only a few shots for Belter to take those kills for himself. And it actually goes over to Zion. They are making sure pull Belter is not alone in these fights ever. And it helps to keep him alive as well. Only double lifts goes down for CLG. Still nice dive in there by Shifter to get it down. It's yeah. just not enough to save the turret. Not to mention they have an, a Nexus turret taking significant fire inside their base. Still doing what they can. Dignitas' initiations look fantastic, but it, they all get shut down so quickly now due to the power of CLG. Gamsu's alts are right through the core of the team. Shifter can get where he want, but they can't last long enough, unfortunately, at this point with the damage CLG has done. That inhibitor turret will stand, but not for too long here. It was 26 minutes in, and it's 8 to 3. About a 9,000 gold lead right now by CLG. Yeah, taking another look at this one. Uh, Double lift does end up getting hit a few times by the soldier's gam suit. You can see they're desperately just trying to get to yeah. the back line. And the back line is Double lift and pull Belter Shifter. Gets right in on a Double lift, finishes him off, but then he's actually dove beyond the range of anyone else on his team. Uh, there, we didn't actually see Kiwi could get the Annie ultimates. He hasn't been on point with his Annie ultimates this game. One on to Alistair before. Mm -hmm. Look at that thing fly. Shwee. Majestic. Very nice. Good follow. -up. Meanwhile, everyone from Team Pink and Toss is just in the jungle. CLG looking for the Baron grab. Pretty much just walking Dignitas into this section and taking what they want when they want it. I don't even know if they're going to get Dignitas to come out of the base, though. They may have to just go right for the win here. And they've done a great job. It wasn't exactly how they started. They did do the lane swaps, but they weren't worried about the picks. They were worried about what Dignitas did when they got to the lanes on the lane swap, and then they attacked. A little bit different, but all along the same. CLG getting what they want. Aphromoo. Keeping the smiter away as best he can. Oh, man. <laughs> Can't smite if you're not in the pit. Very nice Ash Arrow to come through and lock down on that Baron Smite. Smithy's going to go right by, almost hitting this. Knows he has the vision, but does not have the range. And CLG look to set up the offense one more time. The Baron now, they'll cap the cavalry to help out the minions. They actually may get one more back in here. Why not? Let's see what they grab. Yeah, Doublelift had enough gold to build the Last Whisper straight off. Uh, so it's definitely worth that. Yeah. Uh, Pope Elter picks up another Elixir of Sorcery. That's his second of the game. Uh, the extra mana regen from that is actually pretty important for Kog'Maw, who just wants to poke spam. Even with the blue buff, you can still run yourself out. So as much mana regen as you can get. And yeah, it looks like CLG is going to be setting up 
for the inhibitor sweep. Team Dignitas is going to have to engage them before they get poked out. Yeah. So Dignitas, I feel like if Dignitas wants any chance here, they have to fight almost immediately. And they definitely can't get caught out of position. They're trying to push that top wave. So close to taking the turret down. What? Oh, right by. Can't do much to get out of this one. It's a flash in from Aframu as well. And Core JJ is just completely caught out of position. Cannot get help from Kiwi Kid. You saw the team saying, try to get out of this if we can. It's not the fight we want to take. And it was not a fight they wanted to take. Yeah, now three people down with Baron Buff and a wave in the mid lane. This could be CLG's game. Aframu with the alt on, able to just take the complete laser from the inhibitor turret as it shreds the resistances. It's going to be all right. He's a big mean cow this game. Beautiful scores across the board for CLG here. Coming out with Pobelter in the mid lane seemed to work out very nicely against Team Dignitas with a few quick lane swaps in the early game. And that seemed to right everything for CLG to come through now. Gamsu gets Whoa. hit. They want to clear the last few members of Dignitas off the rift before they clear the Nexus. That's at least going to be two more, or one more, I should say. Gamsu got out alive with his life as they start in the Nexus turrets. Yeah, they're out of super minions right now, though. I wonder, <laughs> there's respawning and a home guard Hecarim coming after them. This might not be over yet. Fate's call, and he's in, and he's out. Timbers goes down. They are able to get a nice dodge out of that. Quickly safeguarding in, Smithy saves himself, but getting out of here with Baron will be nice. They can get maybe one last push with some minions. It's wearing off pretty quick. Maybe double lift here in the bottom lane. Yeah, another dragon to come up just to be completely safe, you know, for the extra turret damage, because clearly Why not? they haven't killed enough turrets already in this game. Uh, one thing that's interesting about this is last split, COG had a pretty remarkable record against teams in the bottom half of the standings, but then didn't necessarily beat all the better teams. Here we go, though. Shifter, sneaky little flash. Looks like COG's going to get dragon number two. Basically, coming in with their lane swap strategy, like we've known that COG is able to do this to teams. They can out-rotate them, maybe not to this eight turret to zero level, especially against Team Dignitas, a team that did no roster changes in the offseason and should be fairly well coordinated. So at least with the roster change here, no longer Link with Poe Belter, especially Link doing a lot of shot calling. Right we're kind of seeing that COG can still do what was making them COG last split, at least from the rotational standpoint. Absolutely. The core still lives there in the fundamentals for these guys. Yeah. They know how to execute. Exactly what Team Dignitas couldn't have happen, COG knew would be great to have happen, so they rotate Oosh. a little bit early, get a couple quick kills, oh, three to be exact, and, you know, two inhibitors down, couldn't quite get the Nexus turrets. Baron Buff ended up running out, but if they're patient, they can end this game. Really great job by CLG to keep their composition in a way that all of the crowd control is working pretty much instantly. We saw that kickback of Shifter instantly towards Aframu, and then it was Zion Spartan. One, they're positioning for it, and two, they're not stacking the crowd control. So it works out. It's nice. Let's see what they can get out of this one. Zingy goes in. He goes down quick, not even able to get the ult oh, right out there. Shipper. Thought the team was following behind. The Luden's Echo blows up and hits Kiwi Kid as well. They're all very low. Double lift getting the double kill on this one. And it looks like he'll pick up one more as the bag of chips. They go on to the Nexus turrets. They did not lose a turret this game defending their base. And Counter Logic Gaming are going to come up with their first win on the summer split. 16 to 3, 32 minutes in. CLG takes down Team Dignitas. And it's very rare in this day and age to win a game without losing a single turret. It goes to show how well COG was playing these lane swaps, rotating around, always beating Team Dignitas to the spot. And then they had enough of a killer instinct to know when to go for fights. The fastest game we've seen today, 32 minutes. The other ones have been up around 45. Again, 10 turrets to zero, just one lone turret. COG almost killed every single one. Didn't need the dragon control. Very few missteps there for CLG, and a great start to the season for them. Great start indeed. Smithy looking pretty clean on the Lee Sin as he went around helping lane to lane. Early part of the game as well, they switched it up and kind of put four towards that mid lane. It was interesting to start. We thought everybody was going back, as you said, Smithy's going to go for his red maybe, but they just wanted to cause trouble. Definitely wanted to make sure it was hard for Shifter to have a good game against Pole Belter, but Pole Belter didn't thrive but he didn't do bad. He went even in lane, and as Kog'Maw, that's what the team needed. Yeah, and he actually did a little bit better than even for most of it. Yeah. Uh, then, obviously the misstep, he got solo killed by Shifter. <laughs> but that was honestly the, the main highlight, or the only highlight, that Team Dignitas had the whole game, because 
they just never had the opportunities to do anything else to CLG. CLG was always in front of them mm -hmm. on the map, always the ones killing the turret and forcing Team Dignitas into initiations onto them. Yeah. But they had enough disengage, the Alistair and the Lee Sin, and even the Maokai with a little mini knockback, triple knockbacks basically for anyone on Team Dignitas that wanted to try yep. and fight him. And we saw it, it kind of Team Dignitas' mentality in that as well. They knew how far ahead CLG was. That point where Shifter kind of walked into the jungle to take on four of them. It, well, obviously, he wasn't going to kill all four of them. They had kind of said, wow, this game is getting out of control. Maybe we can get something here, you know? We can definitely sit back and kind of figure out what happened here. Don't stress yourself out. So I think that's a good mentality for Dig. Obviously, he can still come out strong in this season. They're going to have to discuss this game very much because it, it didn't seem like they were really on board. You can already see Rico talking there with the team. Yeah, Rico does not look very pleased with that. Zero turrets taken down by them. 16 killed to three defeat. Obviously, they need to do better than that throughout the North Absolutely. American LCS split, especially staying with the same roster throughout the offseason. Yeah, you can't really take too much of the opponent's map down if you haven't broken the outer line of turrets. We yeah. say the first one to get anywhere is the middle turret, and if you don't have any, you're probably going to be staying home. Let's send it over to Freakins.